We already have a video talking about three differences between Google Ads and Microsoft Ads. One thing we did not talk about in that video was ad extensions. We have action extensions for Microsoft Ads, and that is another extension not available within Google Ads. This ad extension will show a call to action button that will appear alongside your search ads in the Bing search results. So let's jump into Microsoft Ads. We're going to see how this ad extension looks within the search results. We're going to see all the options we have for the call to action button for this extension. And then we're going to see how this extension works with all the other ad extensions you can have within your search ads. Before we hop into Microsoft Ads and go through the setup of an action extension, I wanted to show you what one looks like in the wild. So I went to Bing, I typed in blue light glasses, and lucky for us, we see two action extension examples just in the search results page. For the top one, we see just under the headline, there's order now, and then the add in position three has an action extension that says shop now. Compared to the other extensions that are part of these text ads, you can see how the action extension can really stand out. Instead of being another extension that's just part of a big block of text, the Microsoft action extension is separated from the other extensions within the ad, but also within the CTA block, it's shaded a little bit differently than the white background. So if we had to include the overall size of this extension, you may consider that it's also visibly larger than the other extensions, thus gonna attract more eyeballs and hopefully give you a higher click-through rate for your text ads. So just like any call to action button within an ad, the action extension allows us to send users to a specific page on the website. And to answer your question, yes, the call to action extension can be a different URL than what you are using as your final URL for your text ads. Coming down, let me click on the headline first. And this headline's final URLs is going to a specific page on the website for their blue light glasses. If we head back to the Bing results, I'm now gonna open up the action extension in a separate window. And this is the page that we are taken to if we clicked on the action extension. And for this particular website, this is the home page. So hopefully the gears are already turning in your head and you can see some possibilities of how you may wanna use these extensions within your own accounts. And as we get into Microsoft Ads, I'm gonna show you how we can structure our extensions as well as give you a few examples of how you may want to implement the action extensions to test out a few different things. So that being said, let's jump into Microsoft Ads. Within the Microsoft Advertising Interface, you'll wanna click on Ads and Extensions on the left-hand side. Towards the top, we'll see the link for Extensions. And in typical Pay Media Pros fashion, we're using a dummy account, so we don't have any action extensions already created. And that's fine, I wanna show you how to create a new one. But before we do that, we wanna be in the right view. So I'm gonna go back over here to the view menu, and instead of site link extensions, we wanna choose the first one. They're all in alphabetical order, so we need action extensions. This will be important to know when you already have your extensions created, but you can view those specific extensions at the account, campaign, and ad group level. So obviously, if we can view them at those levels, we can create action extensions at each of those levels. So to begin creating a new extension, we need to click on the blue button and then dropping down to the blue link below, add new action extension. The first option we have is to choose the language and I'll just scroll down and up really quick. These are the available languages that we currently have for action extensions within Microsoft. So we're gonna to get to the options that we have for the action text. Pretty much that's your call to action. So we see in the first example, it just says act now. If I go over and change the language from English to Spanish, we can see that the action texts have been translated. Let's say I'm creating this Spanish action extension. If I put this Spanish action extension into a search campaign that is targeting English speakers only, they will still see a Spanish action extension. Microsoft will not automatically translate the action extension for you. It's gonna maintain the language that you've chosen. So in this case, the language is set at the extension level. It's not gonna to listen to what you have at the campaign settings. So if you're an account that is using multiple languages and you have separate campaigns for each language, you will wanna go in and create campaign level action extensions. But now let's move on to the actual action text. And there are a lot of options within Microsoft. I'm not gonna read every single one, but I will wanna scroll down so you guys have a chance to view the options that you have. You're definitely gonna find your generic ones, like the learn more, contact us, that sort of thing. But then there's also specific ones you see for hotels, car industry, there's some gaming call to actions, some for e-commerce, we see download, subscribe, test drive, that's definitely in the autos one. I'm gonna choose watch now because this is Paid Media Pros. We make videos. 
So while we may not be able to create our own custom options, and I completely understand why Microsoft does it because people would take advantage of it, but to give us about 70 different options is a lot more than I expected when I first jumped into this extension. So as we saw the options, and you can go back and review them if I went a little bit too quick, you'll be able to see something that will fit your industry. I can pretty much guarantee that. And then let me paste in the URL. If you want to, you can have a different URL for mobile devices. And there are a few other settings, which we'll talk about soon. But for now, I just want to save this one. Right next to the views, you can see that the account option is highlighted in blue. So when I created this action extension, I created it at the account level. If this is the only action extension I am running, this action extension could possibly show up within any text ad I am running, no matter what ad group it's in, no matter what campaign it's in. And if you remember the examples that we talked about in the beginning of this video, that company was using two different URLs. There was the final URL, if I clicked on any part of the headline, and that one was more specific to the keyword. The action extension for that example just went to the homepage. So most likely they have something set up probably just at the account level, just to cover their bases and try to get people to the website. And let me hop into a campaign example and we can go over just one example of how you may wanna segment your action extensions. So this is gonna be one scenario and keep in mind the examples I give are gonna be very high level just to get a basic understanding of what you may wanna do. I'm not saying I would structure a campaign like this, but let's just move on. Let's pretend this particular account has one campaign using RLSA, that's your remarketing list for search ads. Each ad group is purposely targeting a different audience that we have collected. There's all visitors, anyone who visited any page on this particular website. We have a separate audience and a separate ad group targeting only the people who visited the contact us page on the website. And then maybe this company really believes in customer service and anyone who is a current customer is being targeted in a third ad group. Well, going into the all visitors ad group, we can see I lost my other options here because I'm already in this specific ad group, but I don't have anything at this level. I can create a new action extension. If you already have action extensions created, it's easy to click the plus button and add that one over, but I will create a new one again. Again, the audience is all visitors. So maybe I will wanna use a higher level call to action like learn more. Maybe I don't have a good idea of what the user intent is just because they visited any page on my website. So that would be one example. I wanted to bring out the campaign menu on the left-hand side just so you can see which ad group I'm in. But now I move to the Contact Us page ad group. Again, this is an ad group targeting people who just visited the Contact Us page. I'll go in and create another extension. And maybe I want to specifically choose the action text of Contact Us. For whatever reason, people went to the page. They didn't fill out the form yet. Maybe I want to choose an action text that is almost mimicking the action the user almost took on my website. And if I want to, I'll save that one. And then we have that third ad group, targeting users who are already customers. I believe in keeping my current customers happy, so I'm gonna invest in some money to help them find what they're looking for right away, focused on extending my lifetime value. So we'll create a different one potentially, and I want a new one again. And I'm gonna encourage my current customers to log back in. We now see that each ad group has their own extension. And as this starts running, they will each have their own stats, and I can see specifically, is this working? Now already right here, there will be some potential overlap because if you visited the Contact Us page on the website, you will also be within the All Visitors audience. So that user could potentially see a few different ad extensions if they fall into multiple audiences in the different ad groups. The way you would want to control that is to use some audience exclusions. So hopefully the Contact Us audience and the Customers audience is excluded from the All Visitors one to try to control that experience as much as possible. Extensions set up at the campaign level will override your account level extensions. And then extensions like we have right here at the ad group level, they're gonna override any extensions you have set up at the campaign or the account level. So the deeper you get, the higher the priority the extension gets. If I do have different extensions with different action texts set up at the campaign or account level, those will not show up within this particular campaign because the ad group level is gonna override them. I'm back on the account level. We're still under action extensions. I'm gonna create a new one. And now we can go over another scenario. And to do this, let's finish talking about some of the settings. We went over the main parts of it, the language, the action text, the URL options. Yes, you do have parameter options right here too that I didn't really discuss. But the other additional setting I wanna talk about is the selected days and hours. So now we can have ad scheduling for our action extensions. Let me go back up a bit so we can choose some action text. I know there's one particularly for getting an offer. And we have deals and coupons, so any of these are gonna apply. Let's say you have a sale, a limited offer. I'm creating this video in February of 2021. 
but you can see Microsoft let me select dates a couple months down the line. So you can proactively set up some of these extensions if you wanna promote a certain offer. I know this offer is only available in April. If it's available site-wide, I can set it up at the account level. If you have offers for particular campaigns and ad groups, set it up within those individual levels as well. And then we can see we can choose to have it by the accounts time zone, which is the default option, or I can have this extension show up during the ad viewers time zone. So if your business does have specific offers or any limited time deals, this could also apply to some of the industry specific ones, like the automotive and hotel ones that we saw in there. You can see how action extensions can really help with your limited runs. Let's switch it up a bit. I'm gonna choose the action text of order now. Let's pretend we're a restaurant, we have limited hours. I'm gonna remove the start date and end date. I want this to be an evergreen action extension. People can order food, come and pick it up, but I'm a restaurant that's not 24 hours. I only wanna have this extension running at certain hours of the day. So besides start dates and end dates, we can add a schedule. So when my restaurant is open, I can have the account level extension of order now. Now if I go back in and create a new one, I'm gonna choose the action text of C menu. I still want people to be interested in the food that my restaurant offers, but I don't wanna tell them to order now because they can't, I'm not open. I can't give them the food that they may want at that moment. In my first action extension I created for ordering now, my restaurant was open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I'm pretty sure I had it on all days. So for my off hours, I need to create one from midnight to the open time of 11, and then I need to add another one. This one will go from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. It won't let me create one from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. The scheduling for these extensions can only go from early to later. It can't go from later to early. It doesn't understand that it might be different days. So I have to create two different ones here. So for this restaurant example, we have two different extensions. When my restaurant's open, users can potentially see the action extension of order now. And maybe the landing page will be different. Maybe I'll have it set up where it'll go straight to the pickup or delivery option. And when my restaurant cannot fulfill any orders, I'll set the timing to show the C menu option. And that landing page will at least get people interested in what I have to offer. I understand a restaurant example is extremely specific, but you can see how you can use action extension scheduling if your services or your offers change depending on the time of day. So if I save those two, those are now gonna be my extensions at the account level. And after they launch, you see that certain extensions aren't performing. You can always highlight any of them. I can look at editing the extension. Maybe I know the action text is dead on, but potentially I can test a different landing page. Adjust the ad schedule, any changes you wanna make, you can do that. Or if it's just flat out not working, you can delete it from any particular level. Now on here, I'm just deleting the association to the account. I'm not deleting the extension itself in case I ever wanna use it again. And when I'm in the create action extensions section again, you can see I can also edit and remove extensions from this view as well. I know I only gave a few examples and there are a ton more that I can give, but hopefully this gave you a better understanding of how you can use action extensions. It's easy enough to just slap one at the account level and just let it run, keep it high level. And I'm not saying that's a bad strategy, but we get the ability to edit these extensions at multiple levels within your account. And you can layer them in with audiences. You can see what we can do with promos you can see how we can schedule them at certain different times to try to get people in certain moments. This is a pretty unique feature that Microsoft Ads gives us that we don't have in the other channels yet. So if you're running Microsoft Ads campaigns, make sure you're going into your accounts and setting up this extension so you can utilize it to its fullest potential. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.